Yeah. You guys like? <laughs> Welcome back to US Corrupt Cops. Today's episode exposes corrupt officers who got what they deserved after wrongfully detaining an innocent man. Like, share, and comment below if you believe in justice. If you like this video, press 1. On April 19, 2021, in Alameda, California, police responded to reports of a 26-year-old Latino man named Mario Gonzalez acting strangely near Pocket Park. Gonzalez, a father of a four-year-old, was reportedly talking to himself and appeared intoxicated. He was also suspected of stealing alcohol from a nearby Walgreens, though this was not confirmed. Officers James Fisher, Cameron Lay, and Eric McKinley arrived at the scene, with McKinley being the first to question Gonzalez. Hey bud, how's it going? Hi. Just coming to check on you, make sure you're okay. Somebody called and said you were uh, maybe not feeling so great. Well, I'm pretty all right. Yeah. You're all right? Okay, what's... what's... Just, uh, I think I've been staying here for longer. Really? I don't think we've met before. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, it's probably like my, my, like I don't know what's going on. Are you not, are you feeling okay or what? Yeah, I'm feeling good, like, all right, like, uh, something happened over there. Oh, oh. At hey, where? Okay. So, it's over there, like, um, what's it over, like, um, I like the one more bigger, I guess. Yeah, that's something blue. Blue? Okay. Um, so, like, this thing. 31 to 41. Can you stop at the Walgreens and see if they had any walkouts with the uh, description? About 5'5, five, five, probably 250. What's that? Babies. Oh yeah, like I think things like that. Oh, and I heard something like somebody was playing to like go there and I tried to call police yesterday. Oh, you? Yesterday too? Oh, you called us yesterday? No, I didn't call you guys. Like okay. I went over there. Hello. Uh, you know, stuff like that. Uh -huh. And, um, stuff like that. Have you been like sleeping back here or what? what? Yeah. What, what's your name? Uh, oh, so these guys were talking to me. Like, there's this guy that's supposed to have some, like, something on the team or something. Okay. And, like, so they left and I heard like stuff that was like, there was like asking for help. Of course, you know, like, get there and everything. I'm not sure if I should go up over there. Mr. Gonzalez appears incoherent and disconnected from his surroundings, confirming the reports received. An officer approaches him due to concern over an open container nearby, expressing a desire to ensure Mr. Gonzalez's safety. Despite this, Mr. Gonzalez is hesitant and reluctant to provide his name even contradicting himself after initially disclosing it. So, I didn't catch your name yet, though. What was your name? Hey, you're gonna kill him? What's that? You're gonna... I just, I just wanted to know your name. I'm Officer McKinley. McKay? McKinley? McKinley, yeah. McKinley. Yeah, what's your name, though? I don't think we've met before. I think it, it seems like you're trying to like rack your brain like, oh, have we talked before? I don't think we've talked oh, before. Like, like, I was like over there, like they told me to never come back over there. Over where? Uh, South Shore? Something like that, like I, I haven't had a phone, like something happened or anything. Okay, well, but what's your name? Something Mario, can you keep your hands out of your pockets for me? Okay, well, I guess that's it. Oh, well, well, hold on. So we're gonna talk because I'm I'm concerned about this open container and 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 everything. So no, just leave that there. So what's your name? I don't think that goes to that. Did you did you say your name was Mario? Did you say your name was Mario? 
Yeah? Okay. So here's the plan, Mario. Uh, nope. Sorry. It's not that. Okay, what is your name then? Uh, Okay, here's the plan, okay? I gotta identify you, so I know who I'm talking to. Make sure you don't have any warrants or anything like that, okay? Uh, you come up with a plan, no, that, let me know that you're not gonna be drinking in our parks over here. Okay. Like, like, get, you know, stuff like that. Yeah. And then we can be on our merry way, okay? Merry do, you have, do you have an ID on you? Merry yeah, like that. Do you have an ID on you? Uh, if you can't do that, then I'm gonna have to take you, okay? Officer McKinley threatened to arrest Mr. Gonzalez for not revealing his name, despite constitutional protections under the Fifth Amendment and guidelines set by the Police and Criminal Evidence Act of 1984. The officer's action seemed hasty and aimed at coercing compliance rather than following due process. Another officer later joined in the attempt to obtain Mr. Gonzalez's identification. Officer McKinley threatened to arrest Mr. Gonzalez for refusing to disclose his name despite constitutional protections that allow individuals to avoid self-incrimination by withholding identifying information. The Fifth Amendment of the U.S. Constitution and the Police and Criminal Evidence Act of 1984 in the U.K. outline these rights. Another officer later joined McKinley in attempting to obtain Mr. Gonzalez's identification. We're just gonna put your hands behind you. Like what? You got what? No, wait, wait, wait. It's, it's, wait. What? Hey, Mario. Uh, head? Hey, Mario, walk with me, okay? Well, it's not that. Okay, walk with me. There, there you go. Thank you. Thank you. Right, Appreciate here. it. So, I didn't go. No. Hey, Mario. Just relax. Just relax. Just relax for us, okay? No. Oh, no, no. I appreciate it. Hey, hey, hey. No, it's not that. Do Sorry. me a favor, Mario. No, I can't do that. Mario, please don't resist us, okay? I didn't stop. Alright, Mario, please right. don't yeah. resist us, okay? It's not that. Mario, please do not resist us, okay? It's put your arm behind your back. Put your arm behind your back, okay? Mario, put your arm behind your back. Hey, Mario. I wanted to throw this. Mario. I wanted to throw this to a That's fine. There. Oh, like smoke. Yeah, we got this. We got this one. I got it. So I didn't try to do that, okay? Okay, hey Mario, put right. your hand behind your back. Hello. I gotta, sorry, Mario. sorry, there. Mario, yeah. what's that? Put your hand behind yeah. your back. Yeah. I think we've talked before, Mario. No, I think, it's not I, that. This is all coming back to me now. No, it's not that. Mario. Okay. It's okay, all right? We're just, we just gotta figure out what's going on, all right? So we just oh. get your cooperation real quick here. Damn, no wonder. Okay. There, I got it, man. No, I Mario, yeah. put your hand behind your back, okay? Please. Okay. Please put your hand behind right your back. There. Mario, put your hand behind your back. Mario, Mario, please put your hand behind your back. Okay, please stop resisting us, okay? Don't fight us. Yeah, so you just gotta relax. Please. Mario, Mario. You got it? You good? Oh my god, it's not that. It's not that. Here. Hey, Mario. There. Yeah. Yeah. What's that? Stop yeah. it. Hey, Don't Mario. Don't do it. Give me a favor, okay? Don't do it. 
Can you please put your hand behind your back and stop resisting? Okay. Oh, no wonder. There, I got it. Ay, ay, ay. What do you have? Sorry. No, it's not that. Okay. No, yeah. it wasn't that. Hey. No. Stop, 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 stop. No. Wait. Oh, no. You guys like? You guys ought to get that arm out? Mario! Put your hand behind your back. Hello. Officers used excessive force against Mr. Gonzalez, violating their department's use of force policy. The policy allows for reasonable force to effect an arrest or prevent escape, considering factors like the immediacy of threat and the conduct of the individual. In this case, none of these justifications applied to Mr. Gonzalez, yet the officers used aggressive tactics, leading to a violent confrontation and Mr. Gonzalez's distress. Okay, got it. It's okay, Mario. Oh my gosh. We're gonna take care of you, okay? We're gonna take care of you. Alright, there. Okay. There, thank you. There. Thank you. Thank you. You good? Thank you. It's okay. Thank you. It's okay. What's your name? Mario. Mario. What's your last name, Mario? Alberto. Alberto? What's your birthday? You got you. It's okay. It's all right. We're okay, okay? Mario. Go ahead and get a Charlie. I got him. Charlie, can you grab the the wrap? Ah! Ah! Mario. Hey Mario, what's your birthday? No. Oh. 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 Okay, Mario, just talk to me, okay? Yeah. What's your birthday, Mario? It's okay, I forgive you. I forgive you. 1984? What, what month? 1984. Mario. I think I think you just had too much to drink today. That's all. Okay. Mario, calm down, please. Stop kicking, Mario. Stop. Stop kicking. Okay. Think we can roll him on the side? I don't want to lose what I got, man. Okay. Can you grab the wrap out of 111? Mario, just please stop fighting us. It's all right. We have no weight on this chest. No, 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 no weight, no weight, no weight.
Mr. Gonzalez was restrained by three officers who applied pressure on his back and neck. As a result, he began having difficulty breathing and loudly expressed distress due to the rough handling and excessive restraint. Eventually, he lost consciousness. Mario. Mario. With no pulse, the officers seemed desperate to correct their misuse of authority. Additional officers were summoned to the scene and they all started performing CPR procedures in an effort to revive him. After initial CPR and defibrillation attempts, the officers would then use an endotracheal tube to deliver oxygen and inhalation gases to the lungs. This procedure ensures continuous chest compressions while establishing and maintaining control of the airway, facilitating the commencement of chest compressions. Mario Alberto. Officers responded to a medical emergency where Mr. Gonzalez was in cardiac arrest. They did not perform recommended CPR procedures, including mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation as per guidelines. This oversight, possibly due to insufficient training, may have reduced Mr. Gonzalez's survival chances. EMTs later arrived at the scene. From combative to non responsive, almost immediately when we started compressions when we checked no pulse. Yeah, uh, four milligrams each. Uh, 
Mario Gonzalez passed away following a medical emergency during an altercation with police at Alam City Hall. His family believes his death could have been avoided and has demanded the release of body camera footage and an independent autopsy. One officer involved has left Alam's police force and the other two are on administrative leave. Gerardo Gonzalez, Mario's brother, established a GoFundMe page to support the family. On July 1, 2023, two Akron Police Department officers were on patrol duty when they observed a vehicle driving near Copley Road in Ohio with a temporary tag. This prompted the officers to conduct a registration check on the vehicle to ensure its validity. However, upon running the tag through their system, the officers discovered that the tag was expired and there were active warrants for the vehicle owner. Initially losing sight of the vehicle briefly, they eventually located it in the parking lot of the family dollar store. A man named Jordan Ely Sr. was standing beside the vehicle and the officers promptly approached him. The entire encounter was recorded on one of the officer's body cameras. What's up, man? All right. Hey, come here, man. Don't do this. Don't do this. Please, please. Please, sir. 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 Please,
From what we've observed, Mr. Ely was visibly distressed, most likely due to the excessive force exerted by both officers on him. He repeatedly mentioned having difficulty breathing, explicitly stating his asthma condition. Despite pleading for assistance, he had to struggle to rise from the ground to alleviate his breathing. Additionally, Mr. Ely was now experiencing bleeding from his mouth, probably a result of the punch delivered by one of the officers. The scenario describes a situation where the police tried to arrest a person named Mr. Ely. According to the police report, the officers physically restrained Eli, who resisted their attempts. The struggle involved the use of force, including strikes and grappling, lasting about two minutes. The report suggests that Eli wasn't seen as a threat and didn't try to run away. Wayne Fisher, a criminal justice professor, emphasizes that while officers can use force for arrests, it must be reasonable based on the circumstances. The narrative suggests that the force used against Mr. Ely may have been excessive. Afterward, more police officers arrived, and they conducted an investigation, including searching Mr. Ely's vehicle. Listen to us, none of this would have happened. Happen, I was trying to talk to you. Yeah, I bet no. you were. Man. That's, I that's wanted ridiculous. to try to fight that's, you. That's, I didn't that's, swing that's you ridiculous. Off of that's ridiculous. Hey, I had a hard time. You're going to be in a red truck. We're, we're going to work with you, man, but this is all avoidable. It's a red Yeah, we're going. According to the officers, there was indeed a child in the vehicle, supposedly Mr. Elise's child who was handed over to a family member. Additionally, the officers discovered a baggie in the center console containing a powder that tested positive for fentanyl. 
Mr. Ely was eventually shifted to a seated position and then transported to a patrol vehicle where he was secured while EMS arrived at the scene to examine him. It's important to note that Mr. Ely appeared visibly in pain and quite unwell following the altercation. Are you ready to get Are you going to stand up now or what? I was just scared. I don't care if you're scared. scared. Yeah, yeah, no, so listen, I, I don't let's care. Up. So listen, man, it's all over with, all right? Let's have you take a stand up, okay? All right. Let's go. It's all right. Swing your feet under. Get up. Let's get your shoes back on. Oh my God. Outside of your mouth, is anything else ready? Oh, why? Okay. What part? Well, let's keep them away. Come on, stand up. Come on, dude. I told you about, man. You didn't swallow any drugs, did you? No, sir. Oh, man, it's all over. It's all over. time on his pockets. All right. All right. Come on, Pocket. man. Ambulance is coming. They'll check you out. Swing your feet. Yeah, swing your feet. Swing, yeah, we'll roll the window down. Swing your feet. Ambulance is right here. They're going to yeah, check you out. I just... Mr. Ely faced charges of obstructing official business, resisting arrest, and felony drug possession. The officer's body camera footage was reviewed following the department's use of force policy, which mandates investigations into all reported incidents involving the use of force. Akron Police Chief Steve Mila addressed the situation, stating, I'm aware of a video circulating on social media showing an interaction between APD officers and Mr. Jordan Ely Sr. on July 1st at around 7 p.m. on Copley Road. As with every use of force, a thorough investigation will ensure adherence to APD policies and procedures. Upon completion, the Akron Police Auditor and the newly established Akron Citizens Police Oversight Board will review the matter. On May 9, 2023, in Palm Beach Gardens, Florida, things got heated at a pool in an apartment complex. Ryan Gold was swimming laps when Anna Ivanova asked him to move, but he refused, resulting in a collision and a verbal argument. Ivanova called her husband, Benedetto Salvia, who showed up and made matters worse by revealing he had a concealed firearm. Worried for his safety, Gold called 911. Officer Bethany Guero and another cop showed up in the apartment complex parking lot to handle the situation. Come hey in, how you doing? Keep your hands out your pockets for me. I'm not the one to do Sir, I don't keep your hands out of your pockets. Read my phone. I haven't done a crime. Don't talk to me like Listen that. Listen to me. I don't know you. You Listen, can put that down. I don't down. know you. You're the one with the gun. Why Get down you? on the ground now. Get what down the on the is ground. This? Get down on the ground. What the f I told you not That's to reach for anything. I haven't committed a crime. You don't have any side. Hands out to your side I haven't now. committed a crime. You now you put your hands behind your back. You can't get me for what? Yes, I can. For what? I don't know you. I don't know you. You're the ones with guns. Yeah, you're arresting me for nothing. I'm detaining you right That's now. That's fine. You're detaining me for what crime? Because you don't want to listen. That's not a crime. Your f are your body cams on? Yes, they sure Good. are. Good. Good. I called you guys for help because this guy's brandishing a gun at me. Officer Guero approached Mr. Gold and told him to keep his hands out of his pockets. Even though Mr. Gold explained he didn't have a gun and was reaching for his phone, Officer Guero pointed her gun at him, ordered him to the ground, and handcuffed him. Surveillance footage showed Mr. Gold moving away with his hands down when Officer Guero drew her gun. Legally, police citizen encounters are categorized as consensual, Terry stops, or formal arrests. Despite the situation being initially consensual, Officer Guero's actions might be seen as a Terry stop, justified by her mistaken belief that Mr. Gold had a gun. The law allows seizures based on reasonable factual mistakes, but whether Officer Guero's mistake was reasonable is up for debate. Even if Officer Guero had the authority for a Terry stop, going beyond the allowed limits of detention could make her actions unconstitutional. The 11th Circuit Court of Appeals ruled that officers can ensure their safety if they believe a suspect is a threat. However, since Mr. Gold wasn't acting aggressively or reaching into his pockets when Officer Guero drew her gun, 
it could be argued that her actions went beyond what's allowed in a Terry stop, constituting an unconstitutional de facto arrest without probable cause. Sit down! I didn't say get out my sex! Sit down! Jesus. Where's Relax. your supervisor? I'm He's getting you. See how she's talking? Way. I haven't Relax. done anything. You don't Why am I listen. in handcuffs? I don't care. You're, You're not my mom. Because I'm You're not my dad. For a gun. That's fine. I don't have a gun. I haven't committed a crime. Do, when I told you to when keep your hands out of your pockets, You're not you did my, it. I didn't commit a crime. You you don't get to tell me what to do. Yes, I do. No, you don't. Why are you yelling at me? Because I have every Who right to right you? now. Who are you? What's your badge number? 321 Guerrero. G-U-E-R-R-I. Make sure you spell it right. If you're this scared... Of a guy Stand in a swimsuit. For 20 years. You're terrified of a guy in a swimsuit. I didn't do anything. You can shut your mouth. She just they just detained me. I explained. There's no gun. That guy I don't detain gun. anybody for no reason. Then what reason? Because I What crime did I commit for you, you to detain me? Shut your mouth so I can explain it to you. Are you in charge of this lady? Why am I in handcuffs on the ground? Can you, are you a yeah. supervisor? No, he's not. Can someone explain I, why I'm handcuffed on the ground? Shut your mouth no. so I can talk to you. Look at you. <laughs> You're furious. What did I do? You did not listen. You're not my boss. Listen to I me. I don't need to listen to you. Yes, you do. No, I don't. She doesn't right. get to detain me. Yes, pull I her do. Gun, pull her gun on me. Because when put you put me on the ground in your pocket, and I'm I didn't commit a crime. Of a I don't gun. care. You You're don't that terrified. Listen. You shouldn't be a cop if you're that terrified. I've been here for 20 years, punk. Yeah, yeah, here. Here. Go somewhere real. You're terrified of Palm you know Beach Garden. Are you a favor? supervisor? Can you ask this lady why I'm in handcuffs? Tell her what crime I I've committed. I keep trying to tell you, Go you ahead. want what to crime? talking over me. What crime? I get called because crime. someone is... What suspicion? Yeah, you don't need to be in crime. Yes, you I don't do. need to be in crime. You need you suspicion do. of a crime. No, you do she not. Yes, you do. You don't know the law? Please you explain it to him. You cannot just go around hey, detaining you, you, random people. Can you calm people. down? Can you calm down for can, a second? I'm in handcuffs. Can you calm around. down? Obviously, we're not getting anywhere. Stand up? I'll calm down if I can stand up. What I'm in do? charge, not you. No, you're not. And you blue nail polish. Cute. Okay. Yo, no, 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 no. I'm not going to stand up. Down. What did I do? Down, all right? What? Right now, all I need you for to do is keep your mouth shut. Yeah, that's, I don't care. I'm not going to do it. Arrest me. You are arrest. Yeah, I want to. Okay, arrest me. You are Go ahead, take me to jail. Go ahead, take me to jail. Take me to jail right now. Take me to jail. Oh, I will. Do it. I'm, I'm ready. Going to. Okay, I'm ready. Let's go. What's your name, dude? Excuse me. What's your name? What's your Allow name? me to stand What's up. What's your name? No. no. Negative. Doesn't work that way. Okay. Tell I'm me what crime I'm here for. It's fine. It's fine. Don't worry about it. You are already. You are. You're under arrest. For what crime? You have to give your name. You're already on arrest. That's fine. What crime though? Don't worry. She already told you. She's already got. Resisting, resisting arrest is a secondary charge. That's a secondary charge. It's not a secondary. Then take me to jail. You are going to jail. Don't worry about it. I got you. Let's go. Mr. Gold was warned by the cops that he could get arrested for resisting. He argued that resisting arrest is usually a secondary charge, depending on the state's laws. In Florida, for example, resisting can be a standalone charge under Section 843.02 of the Florida Statutes. The scenario refers to legal cases like Senko v. Jackson 2022, and Stamus v. Brown 2010, to show how courts have interpreted these statutes. In Mr. Gold's situation, even though he didn't immediately follow an officer's order, he eventually did after explaining himself. The argument is that when he reached for his phone from his pocket, it might not be seen as a deliberate act of resisting the officer. Therefore, the suggestion is that a court might likely find that Mr. Gold didn't break the law in these circumstances. That's fine. I'm ready to go to jail. Take me. You're gonna go. Trust me. Is your me. body camera on, sir? All our body cameras are on. Perfect. He came out here. Me and, and Strezlecki roll up. He's got his hands in his pocket, and I go, bro, take your hands out of your pocket, right? And then when I he didn't hit it, he goes, he goes and pulls the phone out, and he goes to put it back. And I said, keep your hands out of your pocket, and I drew down on him. I drew down on him. Okay. That guy. Uh, has anybody talked to... Not yet, because Mike came okay. running out. Joe went running out. Let's... I'm over here literally by myself with this f***ing guy. All right. Are you okay to go talk to her? Yes. I have to call my husband. Can you wish to tell me what happened here today so I can have a better understanding? Yeah, I mean, my, my wife called me. She called me and said that there was a guy harassing her at the pool. Okay. Was it that was guy over there? Yeah. Okay. Um, and so I just ran over here. He was obviously a lot bigger than me. And I didn't, you know, want to get involved. I was trying to pull my wife away. And she just got closer. At what point did the gun become at all? Well, well, how did, how did he know that you were armed? Um, I'm not sure. I, I you told that other officer that you put your hands up like this so that my wife's under. Um, 
I know it didn't come out of, of the holster or anything like that. No, I didn't um, say it came out, but how was he able to know that you were armed? Because he called us and said that you were armed. I mean, if I lift my shirt up, you could see it. Okay. But, so did you want him to see that you were armed? Did you tell him you were armed? Um, I don't know. I don't think so. No. In this situation, security footage contradicts what Mr. Salvia told the police. The video shows him going up to Mr. Gold, lifting his shirt to reveal a concealed firearm, which goes against a Florida law about improper display of dangerous weapons. This law considers showing a weapon in a rude, angry, or threatening way, not in self-defense, as a first-degree misdemeanor. The video suggests that Mr. Salvia might have shown his firearm in a threatening manner. While self-defense could be a valid reason, Florida law only allows using force if a person reasonably believes it's necessary to defend against imminent unlawful force. Even though there was a heated argument, the video indicates that Mr. Gold didn't make physically threatening moves and kept a safe distance. As a result, a court would likely conclude that Mr. Salvia's actions weren't justified as necessary self-defense. So, we spoke with that gentleman, okay, I spoke to him. I'm trying to understand exactly what happened, but yet, can you explain to me from your perspective what happened? Oh, like he started screaming, he started getting closer, he started falling up his fist. So and he's and walking towards you? Yes. Okay. My wife got closer to him, and I tried to insert myself in between them. Okay. Um, so at that point, we were maybe like four or five feet apart. Okay. At what point in time did you pull up your shirt? Somewhere in there. I really am not comfortable saying anymore. I'm not, I'm so hazy in my memory that I don't want to say the wrong thing. Um, I, can I, can I wait until I have a lawyer? Sure, so that's absolutely. What, we just wanted, I mean, to, we just wanted to give I... you the opportunity because we're going to look at those cameras and we just yeah. want to make sure that what we're going to watch mm -hmm. matches what you're saying. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, I'm telling you, I, I lifted my shirt up. At any point during your encounter with him, did you inform him that you were armed? I mean, I think that was informing him that I was armed. By lifting up your shirt? Yes. Okay, we'll leave it there. Oh, I mean, I'm, I'm, we'll, we'll leave it there. You already asked for one. We'll leave it there. Yeah, I was going to say either you hold him or you file, but we have a weapon and it was used in crime. Well, we'll take the weapon. What are you going to take the weapon for? Right now, pending the outcome of the investigation. So then I, I would go with that then. Take him for the resistance. Yeah. What do you think, Beth? And then you can let him know, hey, we're taking your firearm, um, pending the outcome of this investigation. But I, I, I feel like at this point, they both deserve to go, and I'll tell you why. Officer Guo shut off her body camera during an encounter with Mr. Gold and ended up being taken to the hospital due to health problems. Initially, Mr. Gold was taken to jail, but Sergeant Dennis released him after reviewing surveillance footage that wasn't initially available. Mr. Salia had his firearm seized, leading to his arrest on a weapons charge, but the charges were later dropped after he completed a pretrial diversion program. Mr. Gold filed complaints, prompting an internal affairs investigation that resulted in Officer Guo getting fired for violating department policies. Despite Officer Guo's lengthy service, she planned to appeal through arbitration. Unhappy with the police conduct, Mr. Gold decided to leave Palm Beach Gardens and hinted at possible legal action. He criticized Officer Guo's behavior and questioned the lack of consequences for other officers involved. Even though Officer Guo faced repercussions, Mr. Gold received praise for standing up for justice and police reform, with encouragement to take legal action if necessary. On May 21st, 2023, Mr. Henderson was driving his friend home when he spotted a patrol car behind him, its lights flashing and sirens blaring. This signaled that the officer was signaling for a traffic stop. Following standard procedure, Mr. Henderson pulled over to the side of the road and stopped completely. At the same time, he started recording the encounter on his mobile phone for his personal safety. This decision proved to be wise as events would later reveal. Henderson, how you doing, boss? What's up, Wish? All right, man, I'm Trooper Holder with the Maryland State Police. You're being oddly in visual report, okay? All right, you know I stopped you? All right, sure don't. You know how fast you were driving? 35. Back 40. here? What back you here? mean, back here? Hey, what's going on? Let's 
black. I got this, dog. Tell out. You got how you being pulled over. No, I don't even feel like that. You know how fast you were driving on this road back here? What road? Pacific Drive. Pacific? Yeah. What, 20? You were driving 20? I'm asking, what, what was I driving? I'm asking you. Do you know how fast you were going? You, you pulling me over, what's going on? What's yeah. up? I asked you if you know how fast you were going. I'm asking, how fast was I going? Yeah, you just said 35. I was going 35 on uh when you first got behind me on, uh, on, on Great Mills Road. I seen you the whole time when I came out the liquor store. Okay. You was on me from back then, so what's going on? Okay. Well, there's two reasons I stopped you, okay? First reason is when you came out of that parking lot, all right? and en entered onto a, par a private road or a public roadway, you didn't stop. Huh? You didn't stop. What you mean I didn't stop? So when you're entering a private road onto a public roadway, you're supposed to stop. You didn't stop. Stop where? I'm not understanding what you're saying. Stop prior to entering the public roadway. Stop. So you left the parking lot, right? What parking lot? The parking lot where the liquor store was. I left the parking lot? Yes. Yeah. Okay, that's where you were, right? Right. When you entered onto Gray Mills Road. Correct. Right. You didn't stop. I've been I've been stopped there for ten minutes, right? Cause we it was uh traffic in the uh parking lot right around. Mm -hmm. Coming out, we couldn't get out. Okay. I mean, I get what you probably saying, yeah. you know what I mean? But, yeah. you know. Yeah. I'm not it getting ain't... it. I'm the driver, so I, I'm not getting what okay. you're saying. I was stopped at uh, hey, Canopy. For... Not to cut you off. I mean, I don't even want to move. He ain't I, got I, nothing I, to I do with right that. Here. He live right here. I was, can't go home. Go to the store. You just hang out, man. No, I'm just, huh? You just hang out. No, it's cool. I'm saying I live he right here. He asked the kid he going to the house. I was taking him to the uh, store. Oh, uh, you were taking him to the store? Yeah. All right, well, just let me finish up what I'm doing. and then you. Oh, okay. All right. You good with that? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. All right. So that was the first reason. Second reason is. All right, hold on, time out. Because okay. I'm still trying to uh, understand the first reason. Sure. You said I didn't stop coming from off a, a private lot. Yep. When I was sitting right there with all that traffic, I left when it, when I could left. Right? But all right, second reason, because I could go back and get the footage or whatever. It don't matter. Okay. All right, second reason. That's cool. You got your driver's license, by the way? Yeah, what's the second reason? Okay, you, can you give me your driver's license? All right, can you call your supervisor? Sure. After uh, you give me your driver's license. All right. And your registration. Officer Cody from the St. Mary County Sheriff's Office pulled over Mr. Henderson and seemed determined to make the situation more serious. Even though he mentioned only one reason for the stop, Officer Cody actually gave two reasons. The first reason was a bit unclear and involved Mr. Henderson allegedly not yielding when moving from private to public property, citing a specific Maryland law. Mr. Henderson argued that he had waited due to traffic challenging the accusation. Despite this, Officer Cody continued with the traffic stop and asked for identification from both Mr. Henderson and the passenger. Maryland fine. Is Black, you can get out the car if you want to. This ain't got nothing to do with you. He oh, no, nah, I ain't want to. He say, well, I'm getting out because I live right uh, here. Okay. Yeah, like I said, if you're going to hang it out, I'm good with it. Please leave uh, your message uh. for 20249. Excuse me. I ain't want to be doing no movement. Yeah, yeah, if you're good with just hanging out, just an idea. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to sit on my front. Do you have any idea? Nah, you pulled me over. He don't need his ID. He don't need that. He pulled me yeah, over. That's what I'm saying. Trust me, Black. You don't, you don't, you don't need... Uh, he pulled me over. You ain't got nothing to do with this traffic stop. Listen, you don't have to identify yourself, okay? I, I'm just asking if you would mind just giving me your name, just so I know who I am. No, he don't. That's all. There you go. You're not, you're, not, you're not in any trouble, like I said, Black, I, trust I, I do this with everybody I pull over, right. right? Your friend's making it a little more complicated. Yeah, that's what I say, I don't, I don't. You don't want to, you don't have to, bro. Uh, I'm just asking. Bro. I'm going to sit on my front right now. I said, okay. you don't have to. You heard okay. what he said, you don't have to. So it's all right for me to he go and sit on my front? Uh, just sit there, bro. You good. Just hang out for right now, okay? Uh, you black, you, you good. Y'all get my license? Huh? Yeah, you did. Can you call your supervisor? I need I need your supervisor. Black, don't tell me what uh, to do, uh, bro. Uh, 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 For real. Uh, All you have to do is chill. This ain't got shit to do with you. He pulled me over. I you could have kept saying, walking. Next time, you. when you see uh, me, uh, uh, next time, don't ask me for no ride. Don't, uh, uh, don't wave okay, at me or nothing. Okay, okay. Yeah, I need your supervisor, though.
Officer Holder didn't violate the passenger's rights after Mr. Henderson intervened to inform him that there was no need to provide any identification. Even though Maryland's law doesn't specifically address this, the Fourth Amendment of the United States Constitution safeguards individuals from unreasonable searches and seizures by the government, including the demand for identification without reasonable suspicion of criminal activity. In this scenario, the passenger was completely unrelated to the traffic stop, rendering the ID request unnecessary. However, what followed immediately escalated the situation from a potential quick traffic citation to both occupants being pulled out of the vehicle and subjected to pat-downs. This action unmistakably indicated Officer Holder's displeasure with Mr. Henderson's knowledge of his rights and his efforts to protect them from being violated. It's good. I can hear you. You can hear me. Right, but I can't see you. You can see me. Okay. Can you step out and talk to me, please? I sure can't. What's going on? Okay. Uh, well, when a police officer requests you to exit the vehicle, you have to exit the vehicle. That's case law. That's case law. Okay. 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 Uh, you don't have to touch my door, bro. Okay. Can you back up, please? Because... For me? You good if I pass for what? You no. Okay. I, I'm sure I showing up. You're not? Okay, then you're gonna go in here, coach. Okay. Pat me down. Y'all see y'all yeah. see the harassment. Now I can pat you down. Are you sure you're Come good on, with come it? on, scam boy. I'm good with it. I can pat you down. Pat me down! Okay. These are the keys. I don't answer questions. Alright, just stay in front of my car. I stand right here. You just stand in front of my car like I told you to. I'm in front of your car. Okay. Yeah, I see it. Hey, shut my door, Black. Your friends make this a little more complicated than it has to be. That's just here. Nah, his friends know his rights. What's wrong with you? Mr. Henderson followed Officer Holder's instruction to get out of his car during a traffic stop. Officer Holder justified this based on the Pennsylvania v. Mims case, which allows officers to ask occupants to exit if they perceive a safety threat. The court in Mims emphasized officer safety as a valid reason for such orders. However, in this case, neither Mr. Henderson nor the passenger seemed threatening, and no suspicious behavior was observed. Therefore, it could be argued that Officer Holder's order was not justified, possibly violating Mr. Henderson's Fourth Amendment rights. He's a First he said then lied, told me I didn't stop at the uh I didn't stop leaving out private property. <laughs> oh man. Did he call for backup, y'all? What's up with you, bro? He on dick. Listen, right? I'm at canopy. I pull out a canopy. He was. He just wanted to pull me over. You feel me? What's up with you? Yo, yeah, I'm. All right. I ain't worried. You know, I ain't worried about nothing, man. You got bike. I know. I know. I just, just let you know. All this for what? First, uh, first he comes to the car. You know how fast she was going on right there on Pacific Drive. Then it, oh, the first reason I pulled you over is because you didn't stop at uh, leaving the private property coming from off of uh, Ray Mills. How I went, we were sitting right there for 10 minutes with all that traffic right there trying to get into Canopy. We trying to leave, you know what I'm saying? I sat there for five minutes. 
five or ten minutes. Damn. You act like we had bazookas and everything. Why y'all ain't come like this the other day when they were shooting out this month? Always the state troopers. They be on. He, appreciate it, bro. He think he about to pay behind me. Nah, it ain't going down like that, brother. In the given scenario, backup officers, initially maintaining composure, engaged in casual conversation with Mr. Henderson at the scene. Officer Holder, seated in his patrol vehicle, suddenly exited, put on gloves, and approached Mr. Henderson's vehicle, signaling an intent to conduct a search. Despite Mr. Henderson's refusal and without apparent cause, Officer Holder asserted he didn't need permission and attempted to forcibly search the truck. The situation escalated into an absurd confrontation. I don't give you permission to search my car. <laughs> you, you a tough guy, huh? Get that shit off your arm first before you try to act tough, boy. I lost your truck. Nah, for what? For what? For what? For what? Give me a reason. What you going in my car for? I lost your car. For what? You you talking about traffic? What are you going in my car for? What is he going in my car for? Give me the reason. Marijuana? Come on, man. It smell like marijuana. That's your that's your excuse. That's, that's what he's okay. Doing. That's why he's doing. Okay. Until, until okay. Ooh, ooh, I love this. Cause it smell like marijuana. They did they then just passed the law where the odor of marijuana don't. Okay. Uh, but as I said that, I ain't unlocking now. You want to search my car? Go in there and search it. Excuse me, stop coming up to me. 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 Okay. It smell like marijuana. <laughs> Man, black, don't even worry about it, bruh. We good, you hear me? Now it smell like marijuana. Why he ain't say that from the beginning? You feel me? It smell like marijuana. <laughs> marijuana about to uh, be legal in July 1st, but he worried about some marijuana. You feel me? Think I'm about to get him my keys so he can search my car. You got me f***ed up. Like I'm one of these dumb boys out here. What we've just seen is Officer Holder's ego driving him onto a serious power trip. He was fully aware that Mr. Henderson wouldn't comply with his unlawful commands, so he quickly alleged he smelled marijuana emanating from the vehicle. This claim was evidently false, as we'll soon discover. Even though the smell of marijuana provided probable cause to search the vehicle during this encounter, a recent law enacted by the governor on July 1, 2023, prevents the police from using the odor or mere possession of cannabis as the sole basis for a search. The legislation explicitly prohibits law enforcement from initiating a stop or a search of a person, a motor vehicle, or a vessel solely based on the scent of burnt or unburnt cannabis, possession of a personal use quantity of marijuana, or the presence of money near marijuana without additional proof of intent to distribute. Nevertheless, even if Officer Holder had the legal authority to search vehicles based on the smell of marijuana, that doesn't validate the search of Mr. Henderson's vehicle, as the detention at this stage is essentially unlawful. Feel me? Police can't even... Fuck it. The ones that's out here doing this they ain't harassing them. But the ones that filmed the police, oh, we gonna harass them all day long. Thinking they got some. Man, I got four people out here for one man. Come on, dog. Fuck it, this guy shot at the playground. Why they ain't pull up like that when the mother was shooting? You feel me? On Mother's Day, we coming from the store, I ain't bothering nobody. He can't even give me a, a, a correct reason. Oh, you know how fast he was going? That, that, that was the second one. First one is you didn't stop at the, uh, leaving the private property. How? We've been sitting there five or 10 minutes.
Ben asked for a supervisor, but the supervisor can't come out. <laughs> Cause he's at the desk. Ian. Go ahead, stupid. Go ahead, go ahead. You ain't need my keys. Go ahead, search you, you stupid. Find what you looking for. And make sure you get some proactive for them. The left arm, you dumb. You, I stand where I want to stand. I stand where I want to stand. What, what, what Supreme Court say? Ten feet. Yeah. After threatening to tow Mr. Henderson's vehicle and securing a search warrant to thoroughly inspect it, Mr. Henderson was compelled to unlock the vehicle. Consequently, he reluctantly allowed Officer Holder to conduct the search, despite Holder alleging the presence of a marijuana odor emanating from the vehicle. Logically, one might have expected Holder to discover the illicit substance. However, despite Holder spending over 10 minutes meticulously combing through the vehicle, he failed to uncover anything illegal. This outcome served as proof that Holder's actions were motivated by retaliation against Mr. Henderson's steadfast protection of his rights. Mr. Henderson, do not ride around like that. Pick up everything that you drop. Hey, you Pick up everything you drop. I got murder on my mind and it's not the drugs. <laughs> I gotta plug my phone up cause my, my phone about to go dead. Smell like marijuana. It says it smell like marijuana, right? Where the f the marijuana at? I, it, ain't, it ain't against you or you or you, you feel me? Come on, man. Marijuana is legal in July, bruh. And, and listen, it, like I said, it don't got nothing to do with you, you or you. Marijuana is legal in July, right? So if he did find marijuana in here, July 1st, they gonna, what? They gonna throw it out, right? No, not necessarily. So. I think theoretically they could. So if I got, if I, if he called me with a gram of marijuana, right, and I went to court July 1st, everybody that got, if it's not a felony, everybody that got marijuana convictions is going to get thrown out if they go up there and get thrown out. I, I don't know. I read the laws, bro. Sure, I, I don't, don't, don't think just because I'm black and my hair like this, I'm, I'm retarded, bro. I, I read the laws. I he wasn't supposed wrong. to search my car in the first place. Okay. I, I don't, I don't think. Any, anything like that. Listen, don't think I'm getting hostile at y'all. I don't think y'all just coming up being, the, you know what I'm saying, the backup. Shit ain't got nothing to do with y'all. Sure. But come on, bro. It's real shit going on in St. Mary's County for you to be with my like this. I, I understand where you're coming from. They got him. I'm, I totally understand. Like I said, it ain't got nothing to do with y'all. I appreciate y'all. Y'all patience, you know what I'm saying? Ain't nothing to do with y'all. What's up? Get my I, go. All right, I got your driver's license, your registration. I gave you two tickets. All right, all the ways to pay a ticket or take care of it on the back side. You going to court? Might have go right to Canopy, get okay. the uh, the video cameras right. and all that. You want right. my you for no reason? You understand? Hold the come on, hold the game. Right. Traffic stop is over. Get the out of here. Thought you had some. <laughs> Hope you choke on the chicken bone and die. You and your the family. Stupid. You stupid. You too, brother. Hey, y'all hear what I said? This ain't got nothing to do with y'all. It just, that's man. And y'all, y'all, y'all can't be doing that, bro. I'm not saying y'all doing it, but y'all can't be doing that. He sitting there said he pulled me over because I, I pulled out a private property and I didn't stop. I was at Canopy sitting there for 10 minutes. Then you say I was, then you say I was feeding him. You, you didn't even tell me what speed limit I was going. You asked me how fast I was going. I was going 35 miles an hour on uh, Great Mills Road. I appreciate y'all for listening. Y'all be safe. Mr. Henderson was ultimately given a citation for something that should have been resolved shortly after the traffic stop began.
Essentially, this traffic stop blatantly violated Mr. Henderson's Fourth Amendment rights because Officer Holder did not demonstrate any justified concern for his safety at any point during the encounter, which would have allowed a search of Mr. Henderson or his vehicle. As of the date of this recording, Mr. Henderson has not indicated whether he has filed a formal complaint. He also has not displayed any immediate interest in pursuing a lawsuit. Let's discuss and share your thoughts on this story. Don't forget to hit like, share, and comment to support the U.S. Corrupt Cops channel and join us in fighting against misconduct in law enforcement. Thank you for being with us.